Hello world, I'm Nick, software engineer and .NET enthusiast, and in this video I want to give you a brief introduction to cancellation tokens and how you can use them in C-sharp to manage your long-running tasks. But before that, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel, it's a massive help and it helps me bring you more great .NET content. Let's get into it. So to demonstrate cancellation tokens in C-sharp, I'm going to use a WinForms application because it's nice and easy to put something together quickly. Uh, and I think it's a really good way of showing how we can cancel uh, a long running task using cancellation tokens. So for this demonstration, I've got a very, very simple application which has a counter on the screen. So when I click start, it will just start updating this label, the number inside that label uh, to the next increment of one. So it will just go up every half a second to the next number in the sequence. The problem we've got that at the moment is that's running as a task, well not actually as a task, it's running as on a timer, which is then calling an event which will kick in the update on the UI. But there's no way of stopping that at the moment, so we need to build in a way to stop this operation. So the first thing we have at the top of this form is a timer. So this is system.timers.timer, and it's not initialized when the form starts. So that doesn't happen until we have our button click event here. So this is when we click the start button. What will happen is the timer will be initialized uh, with an interval of 500 milliseconds. So that is half a second. We are using an event handler here. So we say when the timer elapsed event fires, it will be handled by timer elapsed, which is a, a method that I'll show you shortly. And then we're starting the timer. So when the timer elapses, it will fall into this event handler here, and this will call code which will update the UI using this update counter. So on a very basic level, every half a second, the task will, or the timer will hit the timer elapsed event, and it will be handled with this update counter. The counter will be set to the current value, so whatever number it's currently on, and then we'll increment that and we'll set the text to the label so that we'll update the UI. Simple. The issue we have, or the problem we need to solve, is how to stop this gracefully. So this can be applied to various different background tasks. This isn't technically calling a task, it's just an event handler on the event of time or elapsed, but you could use this for, say, you're running a background task, or if you were queuing something on another thread. This still applies. And what we're going to do is create a cancellation token source. So that's an object that we can create just underneath this timer. So I'll say private cancellation token source. And then I'll call it cancellation token source. So we've got cancellation token source. So what this does is it allows us to encapsulate this token, uh, which is a signal uh, that can be monitored. So essentially when the token gets cancelled, then it can be an alert for any running task which says I need to stop. So it's kind of like an event handler in that sense where we say when this event happens, respond in this way. And specifically we're saying when the cancel event happens, stop what you're currently doing. Uh, now, it's not as straightforward of that, as that. We've got a few things we need to check, but that's the principle we're working on. So how do we use this cancellation token? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is initialize the cancellation token source in our button click event. So when we click the start button, before we start initializing any timers or hooking timer elapsed events up to logic to update the UI and all that good stuff, I'm going to give us a cancellation token source. So I'm going to take the cancellation token source um, property that we'd set at the top of the form, and I'm going to initialize it. So new cancellation token source. So that's done. And then we'll keep the existing logic where we're wiring up the event handlers and starting the timer. But then I'll draw our attention to the actual timer elapsed event. So now that we've got our cancellation token source initialized, the first thing I'm going to do is update our event handler that fires when the timer has elapsed to do a check to make sure that the token hasn't been cancelled. So to do this, I'll put an if statement and I'll say cancel if cancellation token source dot is cancellation requested. So this will return a bool and it will tell us if the token from the source 
has been cancelled. And if it has, then we can say timer dot stop. So whatever you're doing in this method, stop what you're doing because somebody has signaled via the cancellation token, I want you to stop. Just need to change that there. That's not a method, it's a property. There we go. But obviously we don't want to still update the UI after the timer has stopped. So this now becomes encapsulated in else logic. So we create an else clause and move that in there. So to sum up, our event has been changed to incorporate a check to make sure before I actually update the UI, has somebody asked me to stop what I'm doing? And I do that via the is cancellation requested uh, property on the cancellation token source, and I can stop the timer. Great, so now we've got the capability to stop the timer, but how do we trigger it? Well, again, it depends on your application, but for this and this WinForms project, I've created a cancel button, so it's this button here. So what I can do is say, when this button is clicked, cancellation token source dot cancel. And that will signal to the token that it's time to stop. And the cancellation token source will say it has been requested that this is cancelled. So if we run the application, I'll click run at the top of the IDE. We'll get our form and we'll start the background operation and then click stop and it will stop or it's sitting. It will pause essentially. We're not actually clearing it down. We're just saying that operation that was updating the UI, tell the token to cancel. That check will mean that the cancellation token has been requested to cancel. Therefore, we stop the timer. Now, one of the things that I imagine a lot of people are probably thinking in terms of this implementation is, why did we even bother using a cancellation token in the first place? Uh, and it's a good question. Essentially, if we wanted to, we don't necessarily need to use this here. We could say timer.stop, and that would be fine. Uh, and this would be an example, actually, of where you wouldn't necessarily need to use a cancellation token. However, when it comes to doing things on multiple threads, parallel uh, processing, for example, things can get a little bit messy. And so having multiple items which are looking at the same token source means that it's a lot cleaner when it comes to uh, cancelling managed threads or long running work. So while this is not technically queuing things onto the thread pool and all that sort of stuff, it's an example of something that is running every X seconds and then having that look for an external source for guidance on whether to, or confirmation as to whether to cancel. So again, obviously for this very, very basic example, you could just do timer.stop. But when it comes to queuing things up on a thread, well, that's different. So with that said, let's look at a more realistic example of using cancellation tokens. An example where we've queued something onto the thread pool that's gonna run in the background, and actually we want to be able to stop that from the main thread. So here I've got a, uh, a console application, and what you can see uh, at the top is that we've got a cancellation token source, but we're not actually using it yet. So while we've initialized it, we're not actually gonna signal it to cancel. And what the console app's gonna do is it's going to take this static method here, um, which is essentially running a forever loop, you know, a while true, uh, and it's gonna say, if the cancellation token is cancellation requested, so like we had in the previous more simple example, then break, so it'll break the loop. Otherwise, wait for half a sec, and then signal or console.write line um, that you're running. So just write out a string line to the buffer that says I'm running. So while we've got the checks that we would have or that we had in the other example, when I run this, I'm not actually sending any token cancellation. So what I would expect to happen is the thread uh, pool queues the method. We wait for five seconds and during that five seconds, we should see in the console I'm running go going over and over again until after five seconds, we print out from the main thread, still running, and we should still see for the remaining five seconds of the application that it's saying, I'm running. It's still running because we haven't canceled it via a cancellation token source. So I'll run this as an example, and you'll be able to see at the bottom of the screen, we've got, I'm running. It will ask, still running, five seconds in, 
There you go. And as you can see, yes, it is still running until the application uh, closes. So until right up until the, the uh, process finished, the thread was still running. So very simply, because we've got this check inside the action that was queued, and we're saying, just check that cancellation token has been cancelled or not, um, then we can cancel this. So the way we do it when we're queuing up a, a work item onto the thread pool is we use this wait callback object. So that will accept a method in this case uh, for work we want to perform. And then we can pass in a cancellation token. So you can see here, we're passing in an object. So we're passing in, the, they call it state in this. We're using that to manage the state of the operation that we're queuing. So for this, we pass through the cancellation token source type token. And because it's an object, we can pretty much pass through anything. It just gets boxed up and we pass it through to the item that's queued. And then when we actually run the item, we cast the cancellation token or we cast the object back to its type of cancellation token. So we're unboxing that object and inside that box is the cancellation token. Then we go through our normal logic saying, if that cancellation token has been cancelled, then we stop. And because this token has been passed through, we can signal that token and when it's checked, everything will stop as intended. So from the top here, I can say, uh, wait five seconds and then take the cancellation token source and cancel it. Okay, so after five seconds, we'll cancel. I'll do a thread.sleep uh, for a second just to give it chance to actually stop the operation. And then I will ask the question from the main thread, still running? And what I would expect to happen here is that nothing else is processed for the remaining five seconds that we're waiting on this main thread. So let's give this a run. Let's take a look and see what's happening. So I'll run this. We'll see at the bottom on the console, it's running. Five seconds in, we'll cancel and we'll say still running. And there you go. Nothing else is being logged to the console because we've been able to gracefully cancel that background task that we queued onto the thread pool. Now there are loads of applications for cancellation tokens, but it's pretty standard practice in .NET to use these for managing the cancellation of managed threads. Uh, and you can get yourself into a lot of uh, difficulties, especially when you're doing parallel processing, um, but it's extremely powerful and a very clean way to make sure that your threads uh, or ongoing tasks, whether they be on timers in a simple application or separate threads on the pool. In this example, it makes it so that you can be very clean and hopefully certain that the operations you want to cancel have been canceled. I hope you found this video useful. It's a difficult topic and uh, you know if you want more videos that go into more depth on this, then let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to sub subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed and I will see you soon for some more .NET content.